This is a demonstration of the beginnings of the test automation framework, which I call K9, like OK or 9. No. K9 is structured in the following way. All of the files are basically parked in the app uh, subfolder from root. So K9 is the root folder and then app. And in app, I've just put K9. Within K9, the module K9 is defined here. And at the moment, the only useful thing is just to put in debug logging. The main functionality is defined in the same folder by the handler class. So the handler class uh, sits within the module K9. It initializes a Selenium driven browser through the water gem, water gem. And then it just defines the basics. So this gives me access to the browser itself, which you will see shortly. And then these are just the commands that go into logging into Twitter, which is what I am demonstrating. So go to URL method simply goes to the URL, click button, text field input and link click or button click text field input and link click are the three actions, the three interactions with page elements that I'm going to demonstrate. Now you'll notice that all of these methods actually take a hash and the hash comes from a past JSON file. So the details for Twitter, for the Twitter homepage I've stored, I have manually put together for demonstration purposes in this JSON. So we've got the URL and then we've got homepage, the login page, and within the login page are the three main elements. So you have your URL, home page, and login page. The home page contains only one element of interest, which is the login link. The login page has three elements of interest, the email text field, the password text field, and then the login button. And in my understanding, each page element of interest has three uh, attributes, type, element, and identifier. Now, sometimes they're the same, but sometimes they're not the same. So in the case of, an, of a text field, the type is a text field. The element used for identification is a class in this case. And then the identifier is the string, or in this case, the array of strings uh, that uh, define the class of the page element. Okay, so home page login link is a link with an identifier that is a display text of login. The email text field is a class, has a class. It's a text field with the class JS username field email input JS initial focus. The password text field is a text field, of course and it is identified by a class, JS password field, and then the login button, of course, is a button identified again by a class, and the class is submit edge button, edge button primary, edge button medium. I wonder if this is a typo on the part of Twitter. Anyway, that's how it, that's how it works. Now, what I have working is, some, is basically going from the Rails console. You will also notice that uh, I have this command that I run first, spring stop, just to make sure that everything gets loaded because I've been changing a lot of things here and it always makes life easier to double check or to ensure that everything is loaded the way I want it to. So we'll start. We launch that and I will just uh, kick things off by creating an object. So I'll call it B equals the K9 module with the class Twitter. Now, just before we go into that, oh, and I need to instantiate it, new. So the module really just defines that the logging level is a debug. 
handler contains all the main functionality, but then we have the actual, uh, shall we say, implementation. And in the Twitter class, the Twitter class is a child class of handler. It uh, passes the JSON as a Ruby hash, of course. Uh, don't mind the hello world, that's just for testing purposes. And then we have the login sequence. So it's got a URL, homepage, and a login page. The login link that I talked about before is just here, um, declared for convenience, the email text field, and the Twitter email. Now, the Twitter email and the Twitter password are saved uh, in application.yaml, so that's a secret file that lives in the config folder. So you see config, and in config is application.yaml. So this is a file that was added to the git ignore list. If you are familiar with the Figaro gem, this is just so you can store sensitive data like email addresses and passwords without revealing it in the code. Um, so I'm just thinking about protecting sensitive data. But at any rate, it's fairly easy to understand. You've got a login link, you've got an email text field. The email text field will, of course, need you to enter the email string. And the password text field will need you to enter the password string. And then once you've entered the strings for both fields, you then click on the login button. So go to the URL, click the login link as opposed to sign up. Then you enter the, you identify the email text field with this hash, and then you enter the email. You identify the password text field with the information contained in this hash, and you pass through the password, and then you click login. So now let's see how it works. I'll just move this to the side. And this will immediately launch a browser that is controlled by the Selenium engine. Nothing doing because I haven't started anything, but we have a browser that's ready to use. So what did I say? I said B. So B dot login. This is the sequence here. Goes to the page, clicks login, enters the email, the password, et voila, we are logged in to Twitter. So that's the very, very simple, uh, but I think clearly coded and evidently functional prototype for uh, the much more sophisticated framework that I have in mind.